Hello and welcome back to Exothermic Plays Games. I'm Exothermic, and the date today is Tuesday, June 4th, 2024. I've been doing a countdown of my favorite video games of all time through each day of the year, and coming in at number 211 is Age of Empires 2. Age of Empires is a real-time strategy franchise rooted in historical fiction. I call it historical fiction because they definitely take some creative liberties with actual history to ensure that the campaign storylines and gameplay balance are engaging and fun. The campaigns have you following famous individuals throughout history, experiencing their military conquests throughout their lives. The campaign's a lot of fun, and you get a really good variety of units and enemies to work with, while getting to dip your toes into some exciting parts of global history. It serves its purpose, and serves it rather well. However, it's just a drop in the bucket for the amount of content available in the game. Campaign missions are generally done with the same win condition as in competitive multiplayer. That condition is simply destroying your opponent's town hall, or castle, or headquarters, or whatever you want to call it. There are some installation missions and other side objective missions in the different campaigns, but most of them boil down to destroying specific buildings. Regarding the primary game mode that extends to multiplayer, you start out with a handful of workers and a town hall building. There are four resources in the game. Food, gold, stone, and wood. Every unit you train, and every building you construct, will cost some combination of those four. Gold, stone, and wood are rather simple to collect. Just send a worker off to a node on the map for that, and it'll return with resources. If it's a long trip, it might be a good idea to build a depository for that resource near where it's being gathered. Food, however, is pretty different. Workers can build farms and then work them. Farms can be placed pretty much anywhere the ground is level and unoccupied. Eventually, the farm will run out of resources and you'll need to plant new ones somewhere else. But give it even more time and the earth will recover so you can put up another farm where you had one before. If you don't want to wait, you can queue up reseeding from mills, basically paying for a farm in advance, but you won't have to wait to build a new one. I haven't cranked the math out, so maybe I'm wrong for queuing up a bunch of those, but I at least like not having to worry about it for the most part. Tech trees in Age of Empires are complicated. There are 13 playable civilizations in the base game, but when you factor in several expansion packs for the game, there's a whopping 45 of them. For the most part, they play similarly, but there's definitely some asymmetrical balance across the board. Civilizations each get their own bonus, such as access to upgraded versions of specific units, differently costed upgrades in buildings in their tech tree, or access to different units earlier than others would be able to. Generally, the way you progress through your tech tree is by constructing a certain number of buildings from the current age, then upgrading your town hall. In Age of Empires 2, you start in the Dark Age, then move into the Feudal Age, then Castle Age, and lastly, the Imperial Age. Each time you progress in your age, your buildings and units available to you drastically increase. You might think it gets a little unwieldy with so many technology tiers, but the way you access the new tech is actually pretty simple. Many units simply upgrade into the next tier by researching the tech that makes them better, and then all of your existing units of that type automatically receive the upgrade in addition to any future ones you train. A large part of Age of Empires is not only about your unit management, but also your sim city, or the placement of your buildings. The game has a plethora of options for walls, towers, and gates, and other static defenses in order to protect yourself from all angles. In fact, my favorite way to play multiplayer is in larger player count games, rather than 1v1. There's a lot more exploration in the bigger maps, and the pace of the game is a bit slower than other games in the genre, giving each player time to really expand into their own strategy and playstyle, which is critical for the way the different civilizations are balanced. Because there's so many similarities between the factions, and then the handful of, usually, smaller differences that set them apart, those differences become increasingly apparent as the games go longer, because there's more time for each player to take advantage of their own strengths. 
Due to the number of civilizations, it's not especially likely that in 1v1 you can be hard countered by some other faction's unique technology, but it's also not impossible. Having a larger multiplayer game diminishes that problem because the other players would be able to pressure the opponent that's matched up so well against you if they focus on you too much. On a related note, you may wind up changing your entire strategy as you find out which civilizations are near your starting area. For example, if you start near an opponent playing as China, you might want to heavily invest in battering rams and other anti-building units because their walls have significantly more health. Age of Empires 2 is a little rough around the edges by today's standards. The game is slow, and many of your units are fairly one-dimensional, with some occasional differences based on your civilization. But those are exactly some of the reasons I like the game. As fun as it can be to play a really fast-paced RTS that really pushes my multitasking and mechanics, it's also fun to just sit back, make some farms, and upgrade a ton of bowmen to protect a couple of rams as they slowly tear down my opponent with sheer force and numbers. Join me tomorrow as I talk about the 210th game on my list where I put aside even more historical accuracy in the name of an aggressive Gandhi. <laughs>